Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. That is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. And I am back with my week 28 wrap up. We're gonna just jump into the books. This week, I finished Hunt the Stars by J.C. Mihalik. This is a new release that came out at the beginning of the year. I think it came out in January and it was marketed as a sci-fi romance. And yes, it it is those elements, but it's more a sci-fi mystery with romance in it. I already knew I was interested in reading it because they said there was a space opera element, you know, space opera, big event, or events that are affecting big things. My interest was already kindled, and who doesn't like romance in anything? And I think if you go in thinking of it as a sci-fi romance, your expectations are going to be slightly skewed. This is an enemies to lovers romance, but the focus of the plot is on the mystery element. This also gave me warm vibes of like Becky Chambers, because you had wholesome moments of love and affection between between Tavi's crew. Tavi is the captain of the ship Starlight that is hired by her enemy, Torin Fletcher, who is an enemy general. And I do say was because that was during the war. Her and her crew are hired to are hired to go find something that a group of humans stole from Valovia, which is the main planet of the Valofs, who are humanoid in nature, but you know, not everything is the same as humans. The description is really interesting when you read it. And so from the beginning, like, you know, again, th the two don't trust each other, don't like each other. It ends up that Tavi is known as uh, the hero of Rodini on one side and the butcher of Rodini on the other. She was part of a mission where a whole bunch of civilians died. And you find out more the details of what actually happened during the book, so I'm not going to spoil that plot point because it is central to how character relationships change. So very from the beginning, Tavi is like, well, we are going to have an ironclad contract that is going to keep me and my crew safe if I'm going to actually do this because Torin is offering so much money. One of her crew members who was over here, overheard the first initial negotiation was like, let's do it we need to fix things on the ship. And things pro progress from there. There were some plot twists that I was not expecting, and some that I were, or, and some that I did. This packaging of a story is something that I love, and so everything worked for me. Even the slow burn romance as the two enemies realize that we're attracted to each other, and then go on to be like, no, we're, we're interested in more. And you do get the payoff at the you know at the end of the book with the romance especially with the slow burn because like I said the focus is on the mystery heist element I'm very excited I have the second book Eclipse of the Moon which follows two other members from this ensemble and you get definitely the vibes of how thing how things are gonna pair out so definitely excited for more books in this series planning to read that in August as part of the new release-a-thon. You can always join me. And then everything else I read, I was just working on. I continue to work on Valentina Salazar is not a monster hunter. Having a little bit of a hiccup with this one. No, to be honest, it's a middle grade, so it's not written for me, but I felt very heavy. But I, I'm feeling like it's very heavy handed with woe is me, nobody listens to me because I'm 11 and a half. Even though like this family is supposed to be super close, everyone keeps dismissing Val because she's the youngest. And I was getting pissed to the point I'm crying because I'm so angry. That's I, I angry cry in behalf of her. And so I got to chapter six, just slowly working on this one. Then I p tried picking up where the Rhythm Takes You by Sarah Das. This is supposed to be a YA persuasion retelling, and yes, it is very, very YA. Got it only a few chapters in, and I'm like, I'm not feeling this one. I don't normally talk about DNFs, but because I did mention that I was interested in reading this for Jane Austen July, I thought I'd just kind of explain that it's just not working for me. There's nothing bad with 
the writing or the book, I think it's just I'm not in a contemporary mood. So I wanted to clarify that. And so I kind of skim read the rest of it, which I do jump around when I read physical books, which is why I don't mind spoilers ever. And so it looks like, you know, everything works out. Obviously it's a romance. There were certain elements in it that I'm just not the biggest fan of. On Tuesday, I actually didn't feel very well. So after taking a long, long nap, the only thing my mind seemed to be able to focus on was Jane Austen at home, like my nonfiction. And so I worked on this one as well. Just reading more of this the stories and histories of, of home life in the Georgian era when Jane Austen lived. This is a commentary about the places that she lived and who she knew, but she also kind of weaves in the, hey, these are what other historians have said, these are what the Austen family historians have said, and then this is other evidence that we have found through other means. She's doing a really good job. I'm really hooked especially with it being a nonfiction biography. And you know, because I can never have too many books started, I have a digital copy of Light of Uncommon Stars, I think is the title. It's one of the uh, nominations for the Hugos. And so I started reading that. And surprisingly, it's caught my attention. Just the setup of the different characters you meet. You meet Katrina Wynn, who is a transgender teenager, deciding to make it on her own. Then you also meet Shizuka, who is a violin teacher. And so from the synopsis, you already know that Shizuka and Katrina are going to meet. And that's, I think I really only got through the, the first two chapters, but it was enough that it is compelling that I do want to continue reading it. And again, it's not like I can't have enough started. I picked up a big ship at the edge of the universe by Alex White, who is also the author of August Kitko and the Mechas from Space. I love that one so much. I was like, you know, I want to read their backlist. So I got this and started. And it's definitely written in a different style than August Kitko. So if you have read this and you're kind of lukewarm on it or didn't like it, still give August Kitko a chance because it it's a different style. It's a completely different thing. And that would conclude all the books I am in progress with. Then for writing, it's been going decent, I would say. Going steady until the day I didn't feel good and then had a few days off and then had some more massive word counts. So my goal is to write 500 words a day. Still not writing 500 words a day, but it's averaging out. So I'm happy. I'm writing. That's really what is the most important thing for me, especially at this point. I'm also attending the AuthorTube writing conference currently this weekend. And if you're like, oh no, I missed it. No, nope, I'm going to include the link down below because these hosts were savvy and all of the presentations are on YouTube. So you can go back and watch them on each presenter's channel afterwards for anything that you're interested in. So I'll link the main website so then you can go click on the links for the presentation that you're interested in. And if you do, the host, uh, Shannon from SD Houston and Jenna O'Malley, which I forget her channel name, sorry, they have requested us to fill out a feedback form because that's going to help them as they prepare and build next year's conference. So yes, there's going to be a year two for this conference, which I'm very excited about. I am enjoying it so much. They have a publishing track and a writing track, and I've been sampling from both sides and enjoying the content that is there. Definitely, if you're interested in writing or publishing, this is something you should check out. And then for other media, I... Nothing has caught my fancy from whatever I have listened to or wrote. I No? For whatever I have listened to or watched. Yeah, not feeling great on Tuesday kind of dulled everything, and so... I think I just took it more quiet and easy, which meant picking up books that I wasn't sure about or trying new things, like even Hunt the Stars. I picked it up randomly. It was like, all right, I'm looking for something to catch my attention, get me interested in reading, to get me out of this, like, sick funk kind of mindset. I don't know. So I didn't really watch anything this week, but that's okay. How did your week 20 go? Have you read anything interesting? 
And are you planning on participating in New Release-a-thon? If you are, please let me know down below. Thank you and have a great day.